This is a common question in undergraduate theory and viva. So these are the conditions that one normally considers in a person of this age. These should be mentioned first. Once you mention these conditions, you have to discuss the important differentiating features of each one of these conditions. So let's see what they are. In a senile cataract, there will be a grayish white, brown or a dense white lenticular opacity. If the cataract is immature, an iris shadow will be seen. On distant direct ophthalmoscopy, black opacities are seen against an orange background in an immature cataract and no glow is seen in a mature or hypermature cataract. The intraocular pressure and fundus are normal. In primary open angle glaucoma, a history of frequent change of presbyopic glasses may be obtained. On examination, either the intraocular pressure is raised above 21 millimeters of mercury or the diurnal variation is greater than or equal to 8 millimeters of mercury. The optic disc and the visual field show characteristic glaucomatous changes. Gonioscopy shows the angle of the anterior chamber to be open. Diabetic retinopathy is characterized by the presence of microaneurysms, dot and blot hemorrhages, cotton wool spots, hard exudates and neovascularization in advanced cases. The main cause of gradual diminution of vision in diabetic retinopathy is macular involvement in the form of diabetic macular edema or ischemic maculopathy. Fundus examination helps in the diagnosis with additional input from fundus fluorescent angiography and optical coherence tomography. In dry age-related macular degeneration, the media is relatively clear in the absence of significant cataractus changes. On fundus examination, the foveal reflex is dull and numerous hard and soft drusen are seen in the macula. Geographic atrophy is seen in the late stages and OCT is a very helpful imaging modality. Optic atrophy occurs secondary to another pathology, so there may be a history suggestive of it prior to the gradual diminution of vision such as trauma, a sudden diminution of vision causing optic neuritis, central retinal artery occlusion, anterior ischemic optic neuropathy etc. If the optic atrophy is unilateral or bilateral but asymmetric, a relative afferent pupillary defect will be present. The media is clear. The disc is characteristically pale. If the atrophy is due to any retinal pathology, those findings will be present. Perimetry will help detect the visual field changes. If there is disc pallor without any other obvious cause for it, the neuroimaging to detect intracranial compression of the optic nerves is warranted. Pterygium presents as a wing-shaped vascularized growth on the bulbar conjunctiva invading the cornea. Associated symptoms of irritation and dryness may be present. The diminution of vision in a pterygium can be due to induced astigmatism which initially is with the rule astigmatism and can become an irregular astigmatism in advanced cases or due to obstruction of the visual axis. So a refraction will help determine the presence of astigmatism. Progressive increase in the dioptric power of refractive errors can give rise to a gradually progressive painless diminution of vision. Improvement with pinhole is the key to a rapid detection of the presence of a refractive error. And while pinhole improvement confirms the presence of a refractive error, the exact type and degree can only be determined by a refraction. Isolated refractive errors will have no other pathology unless there is a pathological myopia, in which case fundus features of a degenerative myopia will be seen. Corneal degenerations are readily visible as opacification of the cornea. Details of depth of involvement and other details may be visualized with a slit lamp. Posterior capsular opacification occurs after cataract surgery and so a history of the same will be present. Since an after cataract develops as a relatively late complication following cataract surgery, the patient gives a history of good vision for some time after the surgery, following which the history of gradual diminution of vision is noticed. There will be evidence of the surgery on examination and an opacification is seen in the pupillary area, better delineated by slit lamp examination. 
Creeping angle closure is a rare angle closure glaucoma that presents like an open angle glaucoma. The intraocular pressure is raised, typical glaucomatous disc and field changes are present and a closed angle with peripheral anterior synechae are seen on gonioscopy. Now how do we evaluate a patient who presents with gradual painless progressive diminution of vision? Best corrected visual acuity should be determined that is the best possible vision obtainable with glasses or contact lenses. Slit lamp examination to qualify and quantify corneal opacities, lenticular opacity and after cataract. Intraocular pressure measurement to help diagnose primary open angle glaucoma and creeping angle closure. Gonioscopy to help differentiate between primary open angle glaucoma and creeping angle closure. Fundus examination to look for glaucomatous disc changes, diabetic retinopathy, to rule out age-related macular degeneration, any retinal cause of optic atrophy and retinal features of high myopia. Visual field examination for field changes in primary open angle glaucoma, creeping angle closure and optic atrophy. Fundus fluorescent angiography to diagnose ischemic maculopathy for erma and neovascularization in diabetic retinopathy and for choroidal neovascular membrane in wet age-related macular degeneration. Optical coherence tomography for evaluation of the macula in diabetic retinopathy and age-related macular degeneration. Neuroimaging for detection of optic nerve compression if ocular examination other than disc pallor is normal. This was the question. We have finished discussing the differential diagnosis and evaluation. Now let's discuss the treatment. Sometimes the treatment of a specific condition is asked in which case you need to write the treatment of that one condition alone. But if a generalized management is asked, you have to briefly write about the treatment of all the conditions. In patients with cataract, if refractive correction does not result in satisfactory vision, then cataract surgery should be undertaken. After appropriate workup, including intraocular pressure, syringing, fundus evaluation or B scan if the cataract is mature or hypermature, A scan and keratometry for IOL power calculation, surgery in the form of phacoemulsification with intraocular lens implantation, which is the standard of care in the surgical management of cataract, is performed. Treatment in primary open angle glaucoma always starts with medical management. Prostaglandin analogues are the drugs of first choice. Others such as beta blockers, brimonidine or topical carbonic anhydrase inhibitors may be added singly or in combination. If the intraocular pressure is uncontrolled or the patient is non-compliant with topical medication, either a laser trabeculoplasty or glaucoma surgery in the form of trabeculectomy with or without mitomycin C may be performed. Alternately, one of the newer minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries may be performed. Diabetic macular edema is treated with intravitreal anti-VEGF agents such as ranibizumab, bevacizumab and aflibocept. There is no treatment for ischemic maculopathy and proliferative retinopathy is treated with panretinal photocoagulation. In dry age-related macular degeneration, antioxidants and supplements as specified in the age-related eye disease study or ARIDS 2 formula may be given. Periodic evaluation, especially to detect the development of choroidal neovascularization should be done. Once optic atrophy sets in, there is no treatment that can reverse the visual loss. If any underlying cause such as multiple sclerosis or a vascular cause is found, treatment of those conditions should be undertaken. For a pterygium, if vision improves with spectacles, these may be prescribed. Topical lubricants such as carboxymethyl cellulose may be prescribed for comfort. If the pterygium gets inflamed, short-term topical steroids may be given. If any of the symptoms are not tolerated by the patient, then pterygium excision with conjunctival autograft may be undertaken. 
spectacles or contact lenses correct refractive errors irregular astigmatism however can only be corrected by rigid contact lenses the treatment of corneal degenerations would depend on the individual degeneration example for a band keratopathy chelation with edta may be done laser removal by means of phototherapeutic keratectomy may be undertaken for superficial conditions surgical treatment involves either a lamellar or penetrating keratoplasty depending on the depth of the lesion posterior capsular opacification is treated by ndag laser capsulotomy since the angle is closed by peripheral anterior synechae glaucoma surgery is indicated in creeping angle closure glaucoma anti glaucoma drugs are given prior to surgery to control the intraocular pressure